Alright, so in the last video we left off on creating this code for our rectangle class. We also set up another class to hold our main method where we started creating objects of this rectangle class and we uh, called or executed a couple of the methods within that class. So the next thing I want to go ahead and take a look at regarding this rectangle class is to kind of take a step back from this implementation and start looking at the design phase of uh, this particular uh, program that we're trying to create. So the way that I want to approach this is by creating a, um, a fairly standardized uh, concept or sort of proof of concept for a class that you might create either in a Java application or perhaps in uh, an application in just about any other programming language related to uh, object-oriented programming. And that's going to be the UML class diagram. So the way that this is going to work is that we're going to create a sort of abstract description of this class that will provide some information or provides a short explanation about things like the name of the class, the fields that we're going to include in there, uh, including things like their data type, uh, the fact that they're going to be set to private, as well as the methods in which we're going to specify things like the name of the method, the parameters that we're using, uh, the return type of the method, and again the fact that this method is public. So the way this is going to work is we're going to create a box and inside of this box we want to start placing in things for the name, the uh, fields, and the methods for this. So I'm going to create this as sort of three separate components. I'm going to make sure this is more than large enough to hold everything I'm going to need for each section. And at the very beginning here, oops, we'll go ahead and create this first portion at the top. And right here is where we're going to place the name of this. So make sure that each part is more than large enough. So right here at the top, we'll have the name of it. Place that here. Underneath that, we're going to have the fields. So we'll go ahead and create two pieces of data here for the fields. So the way that we're going to specify this, it's going to be broken up into a couple of different components. The first thing that we need to do is include a, a minus sign or a hyphen character. This is going to be used to indicate the uh, access specifier, that is to say whether or not this is public or private. So in the case of private uh, fields or private methods, we're going to use this minus sign. The next thing we need is going to be the name of this particular field that we want to include. So one of these is going to be length. We're then going to have a colon and then we're going to specify the data type for this field. So this one's going to be a double. And then we'll go ahead and do this for the width as well. So we'll have our width. And again, this is going to be a double. I think we can make this a little bit larger. So go ahead and create that and replace both of those here. And then the next portion, this last part, is going to consist of the methods. So for this one, if we look back at this, we've got one, two, three, four, five methods that we need to create. So we've got two methods for setting a value, and then three methods for getting a value, which includes two for getting fields, and then one for getting some other piece of information that is derived from the fields. So we'll go ahead and create each one of those as well. So for each one of these, so we specified this minus sign for the fields, which are private. We're going to use a plus sign for the uh, methods, indicating that they are public. We're then going to specify the name of the method. So the very first one that we included was set length. So we'll go ahead and create that here. We'll then have our pair of parentheses. And inside of this pair of parentheses, we're going to put in each one of the parameters. And it's going to follow the same sort of uh, formatting as each one of the fields where we're going to specify the name of it and then a colon and then the data type. So we've got this field called new length. We have our colon and then we have the data type. And then after we specify the parameters, we're then going to have another colon 
And this is going to be where we specify the return type for this method. So for set length, we see that its return type is void. So we're going to put that here. Okay. So then we're going to go ahead and do this a couple more times for each of the other methods. So we're going to have a plus sign indicating that the method is public. We're going to have set width. This will be the second one that we want to do. The one parameter we have for this is going to be new width. And then have that colon. We then have the data type for it, which was double. Go ahead and close that. Have our second colon for this one. And then specify the return type, which is void. All right. And then for these next couple of ones, for our uh, get methods, we're going to have, a again, the plus sign. We're going to have the name, say get length, the first one that we have right here. We'll then specify an empty pair of parentheses because this doesn't have any parameters. And then our colon. And for this one, since the return type is actually double, we'll put that here. And then we'll go ahead and do this for each of these three get methods. So we'll have get length, get width, and get area. All right. So then we'll go ahead and place all of that right here. Okay. All right. So this will cover all of the data that we want to include inside of this UML class diagram. So looking back through this, we've specified a name for the fields. We've effectively specified everything that we need to about declaring these fields. Uh, obviously, the one piece of information that we're missing is the uh, uh, assuming that we want to initialize this to some value. We don't ne necessarily say what that should be initialized in this UML class diagram. Uh, additionally, when we're looking at our methods, we're specifying all of the information about the header for the method, but we don't really say anything about the actual implementation of it. That is to say, how it actually works in the body. So when it comes to all this code that we specify, for the body of each of these methods, say things like specifying uh, length is equal to new length, width is equal to new width, returning the length or the width, or returning the length times the width. We don't really include any information like that in uh, the UML class diagram. It's primarily just a sort of skeleton or just a very simple overview or skeleton or um, a blueprint of uh, what is expected uh, or what it is that we need to include in it. And then the uh, specific implementation details are really going to be kind of up to uh, up to you. All right, and then one additional thing I want to go ahead and add. Uh, I want to go ahead and provide a little bit more information about the methods that we've used so far. Uh, are these uh, set methods and get methods? So I'm going to use this opportunity to elaborate a little bit more on these. Uh, since these are very standard sorts of methods that you would expect to see in most of the classes that you create. Uh, these set methods that we've included, uh, another sort of simpler term that we can use is to just call them setters. And with these get methods, a simpler term for them is just getters. Uh, in addition to those names, uh, your setters, you could also refer to these as mutators, since they're used to mutate or manipulate the data in some way. And then for these getters, Another term for these is going to be your accessors, since they're used to access the data. Okay. So in this particular case, uh, the primary ones that we're looking at are set length, set width, and then get length and get width. These are going to be your mutators and your accessors. Get area, since this is actually used to uh, perform a calculation and then get that value from uh, some derived value from your fields, you wouldn't necessarily describe this as being an accessor. Okay. All right, so at this point, this is going to wrap up this um, first video where we go through a little bit about the UML class diagram. Uh, going into the next video, we'll take a look at the addition of the constructor method in the implementation of this rectangle class, as well as also look at adding the constructor method uh, as part of the UML class diagram. So we'll see a little bit more about how that looks. All right.